Hello, my most amazing artists. Today, we are going to be beginning some paper sculpture. In order to create paper sculptures, we need to know a few different techniques that will help us in creating 3D works of art from a very thin material like paper. So, we are gonna learn how to do a few of these things that we see here on this poster. We're gonna talk a little bit about tabs. We're gonna talk a little bit about fringing. We're gonna talk about loops and gluing things down correctly, how to make certain shapes um, like cylinders or cones. We're gonna talk about slotting things together and how that can help us attach things a little bit differently. We might talk about how to cut pieces out of our sculpture. So all of these things can help us both in paper sculpture and in architecture out of paper. And a lot of these same techniques translate to cardboard and you can do the exact same thing with that. So all that being said, I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna take a look at how we can create some of these things like this, okay? And in order for us to do this, we'll want a base. And your base is going to be the sheet of paper that you use to glue everything else on top of. I find that cardboard works really well for this. Um, construction paper works really well for this. If you have a thinner piece of paper, I would suggest that maybe you glue it on top of a piece of cardboard or like the back of a cereal box or something um, so that it is a little bit more stable. So let's find out how we can do some of the things that we see here, okay? Um, and your sculpture does not need to look like my sculpture. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to use all of these techniques today if you don't want to. Really, what we're focused on isn't making a particular thing, but it's just trying these techniques. Um, these are really important skills that we will be using in the future, so we want to practice them. Now, in order to do this, we are going to need some other materials. You may want some glue, some scissors, and possibly even some tape. Um, any type of tape will really work for this. You probably won't need this material as much as you'll need these two right here. So, how do we turn something from 2D into something 3D? Well, here I have a variety of colorful strips of paper that I'm going to show you how to create every technique. The first thing that we need to learn about is how to make a tab. How do you make a flat sheet of paper stand up on its end? It's got such a thin edge that adding glue to the bottom of this doesn't make a lot of sense. So instead, so it doesn't fall over, I need to create some feet. So let's talk about how we can do that. I'm gonna start with one of these strips right here. And I actually don't think I need this much paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this in half and save this paper for later. This sheet of paper, however, I need to do a few things to. So the first thing that I might wanna try is I'm gonna fold this edge over and crease it, okay? Now you don't necessarily have to fold your object in half, but this just happened to work out because it is such a thin strip. So what I'm gonna do now that I have this crease, that line right there is gonna tell me exactly where I need to cut. Now, depending on how long of a piece you're creating or how tall of a piece you're creating, kind of determines how many tabs you're gonna need. If you're only trying to make a straight line, you really don't need to make that many cuts. I'm gonna cut right up to this edge right here, um, right against that line and stop. And then if I want to, I could literally just flip this one over and now this will stand. However, if I want this material to bend, it might be ideal to have a few more pieces because now it's just wanting to bend right there where I made those cuts. So I need to make some more cuts in order for us to be able to kind of curve this paper. So the more rounded or curved your sculpture is gonna be, or this piece of your sculpture, the more cuts you're gonna to wanna to make. So I don't have to make them all the exact same size. I'm not using um, a huge amount of precision here, but I'm just cutting right up to that line. You definitely wanna make sure that you have a straight line there. Even if you don't create a fold, use a straight edge like a ruler or something so that all of your feet or your tabs are the same size. Now, I'm going to fold each one of these tabs over, every other one. So I go right, left, right, left, 
up, down, up, down. Okay, and they alternate all the way across. And now, again, I have something that can stand on its own. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find where do I want this to be on my paper, and I'm gonna add just a teensy tiny amount of glue to the bottom of each foot or tab. You do not have to add uh, white glue like this. You can use other types of glue, like a glue stick, but I find that this one um, is superior because it allows us to kind of stick it there for a longer period of time. Now, one thing that might be useful to you is a paper clip or a clothespin or something like that because if you're attaching a long piece or a large piece that kind of wants to spring back especially because you are curving it um, you kind of want to hold it there for at least 10 seconds but sometimes that can be really difficult and you don't have enough hands to do that well one thing that you can try is you can actually use um, like a clothespin or a paper clip and if it's near the edge of your attachment, you can actually use this like a clamp to hold whatever it is you're gluing in place. And we'll see how this can be used a little bit more later. Okay, so this is just one example of how you can use tabs to create something. Um, let's take a look at it from the side. You see we've got a nice rail there. Okay, and now what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a, let's see. I think we're going to create some tabs here too, but instead of making it like just a long row, I think what I'm gonna try to do is make a box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually fold this in half, crease it, fold it in half again, crease it, okay? And now somewhere along the bottom, I also need to make a crease. So I'm gonna fold this up. I don't have to go too far doesn't need to be huge, um, but this will help. So I'm making that crease all the way across, okay? All right, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to create my tabs. I create an incision here, here, and I'm doing this along every crease line that I just made, okay? Now what I can do is I can actually turn these folds into a box. So I can bring those edges in and around like this. Okay, and that allows me to glue that down. What I am gonna do here is I'm gonna use a small piece of tape about the same length as the piece of paper that I'm working on. And it's going half on, half off like this. Okay, and I'm gonna fold that edge and connect it to this one so that I can create that corner pretty simply, okay? Something like that is what we're going for, and I'm gonna kind of fold that over. Okay, so now, oops, my glue is running away. Now I can glue this down, okay? So on the bottom of each one of these, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. Right along that edge, dot, dot, not a lot. You don't need very much, just a bit, okay? Too much glue will cause major issues in your project because it will not allow you to stick things down very well. Um, sometimes if you're making something really big, you can use something like the back of a pencil. If you can't quite reach something to glue it down, sometimes I use like an eraser to kind of help press it. And I wanna hold it kind of in place for at least 10 seconds. And then it should be on there pretty well, okay? So that's two examples of how you can use tabs in your work of art, and this is extraordinarily useful. Um, we use this all the time when we're talking about sculpture. Um, now, what we're gonna try to do is we are actually gonna create some fringe. Now, what is fringe? Well, that's this wavy, floppy stuff that we see here. Um, sometimes it can be nice to add texture to things. You could create hair on a sculpture or a portrait of somebody. There are a lot of things you could probably come up with that this would work as a great technique for. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take any piece. I think I might try, I think I'm gonna do this blue guy right here. Okay, same deal, I need a tab. I can't attach this guy unless he has one of these. 
Um, and in this case, I might even just let this one kind of be straight across my paper here. I don't think I'm going to make any um, cuts except for just a few. Because if you don't put feet on both sides, they're more likely to fall down. Okay? So right there, that's good enough for me. Okay? Now what's next? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut right up to that line and I'm going to be careful not to cut in the same spots where I just made those tabs because then it will break. But I can cut any thickness of strip that I want. Here I'm going to make some really thin ones and maybe down towards the end I will make some thicker ones. So I'm cutting right up to that line, right up to that line and stopping. time's sake, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it right across here. I don't need a piece that big. Let's make some thicker ones. Um, and what I can do here is I can actually make a fan fold. So we go back and we flip it. Go back the other way. Flip it. Whoops. Flip it. Fold it over. Flip it. Fold it over. Okay, something like that. That looks pretty good. And then I can cut more strips. Okay, now I could have straight fringe like this right here, or if I want to, I can curl it. If I hold this on it, so if I am trying to curl fringe, and you may have done this if you've ever wrapped presents before, is I'm going to curl it with the edge of my scissors. If I hold my paper gently on the back, I can add a little bit of pressure and use the edge of my scissors and drag the edge of my scissors along those pieces of paper. And what that's going to do is it's going to curl them over. You can see that here. Okay, and I might leave just a few of them straight up and down. Okay, just so you get a better idea. Actually, I think I'm going to curl a few of them the other direction. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down. Again, not a lot, just a little. And remember what I said before about the amount of glue that you add. That's pretty important. Just a little bit, not a lot. You don't want it to be gooping out, okay? Because if things are sliding around, they're not going to stick to your paper. All right, and here, how about we add him right about, right about there, I think is where I want him. Okay, and you can even see, like, I used a little too much glue. Got some on the edge of my paper here. But that's okay. Okay, so now I've got some fringe on there. Let's talk about some other things that we can try. Okay, one thing that you might do is try some slotting. Slotting works really much better when you have a sturdy piece of paper. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to cut a strip. And what I'm going to try is I am going to cut this in half. Okay, so now that this is cut in half, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an incision on both pieces about halfway down my paper. So let me show you where I'm cutting. Here's what I mean. I'm going to cut right along here, okay, on both pieces. Now I can cut right along that line, stopping about halfway down. And what I can do now is I can actually take both of these pieces, now that they've been slotted, 
and I can intersect them. So if I find that edge on both pieces and line it up, I can kind of wiggle, slide them together, and now I have two pieces that are connected even without glue. Okay, and this can be very, very helpful. So what if I wanna attach this to something else? Well, all I have to do is make a slot, make a slot, stick it together. Okay, and now that piece is attached to the other one. See? So those are just a few techniques that you can try. Okay, so another thing that students like to try a lot is using positive and negative space um, in your work. So one thing you can do to do that is you can cut a strip, you can fold it in half, crease it down the center, and then I'm going to fold each one back just a little bit to create a little foot or a tab on both sides. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some shapes out of this edge right here, the folded edge, and any shapes will work for this. All right, and when I open this, I will reveal the pattern that I've created. It's got nice symmetry, and what I can do is I can glue this down. One thing that can be really fun is to glue it over top of something else or have something running through it behind it. So like even if I just wanted to put this piece underneath it, you can see how that pops and shows through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glue to this and stick it on. Okay, there are just a few more things that we might want to try, um, and that is making some 3D shapes or some forms. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a uh, cone. And so in order to do that, I might try tracing a circle. Any circle will do. I just happen to have this tape here. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that circle out and show you how we turn this from something flat or 2D into something fat or 3D, like a form. Cones are actually pretty simple. Now, actually attaching them, on the other hand, can be a little bit tricky, and we'll talk about a solution to that problem here in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find as close to center as I can and cut up a straight line to that point. And from here, now that I have this little Pac-Man doodad, I'm going to curl this around and you'll see how it gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. It's not going to get any taller. If you want a taller cone, you need to make a larger circle. Okay, but if you want, you can change the size this way by easily adjusting it like this. So if you want a really wide cone like this, maybe something like a hat or something, or if you want something more like an ice cream cone, you bring it around a little bit skinnier like that, and then you can add some glue. Now, one thing is if you feel like you have too much material here, you can always cut it once you find where you want it to go, and then you can attach it like this. Okay, so I add a little glue to the surface, and remember what I said earlier is you can use those clothespins as clamps um, or paper clips or whatever it is that you have if this doesn't want to hold on to itself very well. Okay, so that's an option as well. Um, and so what happens now is I have this edge, whoops, I have this edge that can be very difficult to add glue onto. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a tab to this. And this is something you can do if you ever forget um, to add tabs to your creation. So let's just use the same sheet of paper here. I'm going to cut just a small rectangle and I'm actually going to make two of them and then I'm going to fold each one in half and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach glue to this see that 
And I'm actually going to attach this to the inside of my cone, right there where that fold line is. See how that lines up? Oops, I keep dropping them. He's a little tricky to hold on to. And a little glue to the other side. Attach the other tab. And now, even though I didn't cut tabs originally, I still have tabs that I can glue this down to whatever I need to. So now I have two tabs here that I can add glue to. And I can now attach this onto my paper. Holding it for a few seconds. It's still very tricky to get these um, adhered. I got one side down. I need to get the other side. Oh, his tab actually came off. I didn't wait long enough for the glue to dry. Let's try again. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to talk to you about here is what if you want to make a cylinder, okay? Or maybe you want to make, yeah, let's go with that. A cylinder is a great thing to know how to make. So I'm going to roll this over, okay? But again, I can't glue on that edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called flanging. And before I do this, I want to make that crease line so that I know where to cut to. Even all the way across, okay? And now... I can kind of straighten it out because it's not going to want to curl otherwise. Fold that around. Add glue where I need it. And attach it, lining it up. Holding it for a few seconds before I let go just so that the same thing doesn't happen to me where it unsprings itself. And then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to cut right along that edge and make some more tabs around the outside of my cylinder. Think about what you can do with all these three-dimensional shapes. What could you build? Maybe a castle, a rocket ship, you could add this cone on top, make a tower. Think about all the things that you could do with this. So I'm making sure all of these are flipped outward. There we go. Now I have a surface in which I can add glue to. Not a lot, dot, dot, not a lot, especially with this one because there's so many, I don't need a ton of glue. Okay, and I'm going to put that down. Now, one thing you might think is you can actually do the exact same thing on the inside, just like we did here with this square. So if you feel like you don't want to see these edges on the outside, you can do them on the inside and you can place something on top. Okay. So here is our sculpture. Look, everything's holding on. It's passing the shake test. Nothing's falling off. Um, so this is pretty good. One other thing that you might want to try is you can do just about anything with a paper strip. But one thing that might be kind of fun to explore is creating a loop-de-loop -loop like this. So I made two little feet so that this guy can walk around. There are his tabs. I'm actually going to glue one of them down so that it's holding on to something before I do this. Okay, and make sure that that's really attached. And then I'm going to go up, over, around, back down. Okay, and attach it just like that. And this gives me a nice little curl or a loop. Okay, so here are several different things that you can do. Okay. We've made some tabs on both um, just straight lines, curved lines, boxes, like cubes or cylinders. We created slotted techniques. We created some fringe. We made cones. We created some negative and positive space. We made a loop-de-loop. -loop. Okay, there are a lot of different things that you can try here and many, many more. I hope you have fun creating and exploring these different paper making sculpture techniques. Thank you.